What's up, YouTube? Pokeyfarm here. Proud and ready to deliver you our draft analysis for JLPC Season 6. I am back. I am back with another draft league. Uh, this is one that I, I got a bunch of friends in through Discord. I've been in for a while. I was actually their Season 5 champion, uh, which is really, really cool. So I'm back for Season 6 once again to uh, hopefully retain my crown. Now, this season uh, is a little bit different from the last one. This is going to be straight up Galar decks draft. Um, if it's not in the game, it's not here. Uh, so, some interesting, you know, fun things going on here. Uh, no Megas this time. Uh, last season we had everything. We had full net decks, crazy nonsense Megas, some boomers allowed. Like it was, it was a wild season. But um, in the season, we've dulled it down to the simplest of things, which is absolutely perfect in my opinion. So I'm really, really looking forward to uh, getting into this uh, season. So we had, I believe, pick wise, we weren't. Well, I guess I believe we were like 14th or something. Either that was 14th or I was directly in the middle. Could not remember for the life of me. 14th, yep. Your 14th pick overall. So, as per usual, I did not make a draft plan. I did not. I just. I, I don't make draft plans because every single time I try to, I get a bad slot in the draft and I just don't ever get what I want. So. No point wasting the time or the energy to put one together. I just roll with the punches and take what I can get when my turn comes around. And so for my first pick, uh, I literally picked this thing because just because I wanted to use it. Um, I've wanted to use this in a draft league pretty much since it was announced. And I'm happy that I finally can now that it is. Um, this is actually my first time getting to use a, a Galarian bird in a draft uh, from the start. I have Galarian Articuno in MSDL, but I picked up the team like with two weeks left in the season at 0-5, so I don't count that very much. Um, so this is my first real chance using uh, one of the Galarian birds, so really, really excited about this. Uh, it is such a hard-hitting physical threat. A base 100 speed tier is perfect. It has amazing natural bulk. Uh, literally the only thing holding this thing back from being like an amazing Pokemon is the fact that it has no recovery. Uh, they screwed the Galarian birds by not just giving them roost. And that is bull. I hate that. But uh, for the most part, fighting and flying is incredibly good. Type combination. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to utilize. Uh, hits like a truck. Its signature move, Thunder's Kick, is going to be really, really fun because things that might be able to take one normally with the defense drop might be KO'd by a second one. So that's also incredibly useful to have, just being able to, to drop those defensive stats uh, consistently is going to be really, really nice. So really, really pumped to use this. I uh, can't wait to, to see what I can do with it throughout the course of the season. And hopefully this thing will help lead us to uh, a back-to-back -back championship situation. To follow that up, however, because I saw it was still there once I, uh, once, once you know, the, the two people after me went and, the, and it came back up for the, after the wheel pick, um, I picked up Tapu Lele. Actually, I should probably start giving them nicknames. Um, this is going to be Meet Me. Uh, and then this is going to be uh, a shortcake. I believe that's what I went with. We got a strawberry shortcake here, the uh, Tapu Lele. If that's not what I went with, then you'll obviously see what I went with later. But uh, So, yeah, having the ability to use Tapu Lele in a draft is going to be amazing because this thing is so ridiculous. Just running calcs for some of my future matchups 
sometimes I just don't need to think. Sometimes if if Layla gets in the field and it's in a po it's in a positive position, I can just click a button, and either something dies or something's losing most of its health. I can chunk through pretty much anything with this beast, and that is insane. This mod is going to be absolutely mental to play with. I don't think I've ever actually had a chance to use it in a league. One time I, I was in a league that died that allowed Lele with telepathy. I believe I ended up playing against it, but I didn't, I didn't get to use it, so I didn't really get to experience much of how it would be that way, but this this league's not that case. I still have Psychic Surge, so I still get to nuke things and ignore priority, which is super clutch for my team, because there's a lot of members of my team that are very fast, are decently fast, and don't appreciate priority. So being able to say no to that is great. But y'all know what Lele does. Uh, it just, it's just hits like a truck, and it's going to continue to hit like a truck all season. So comes back around to me. I want to start building my cores, my fire water grasses, my my fairy dragon steel. I only have my fairy so far, so my next two picks, um, almost back to back. I also wanted to grab hazard removal. I wanted to get hazard removal on my team as early as possible. So first off, we got shell shock the blastoise. Um, rapid spin with the speed buff is is great for Blastoise this generation. Um, having that extra little bit of speed allows it to you know potentially get off at least a nice hard hit if you spin on something. Or um, <clears throat> now with access to flip turn, it allows it to get out of the battle as well. So get a spin off and either be able to flip turn out into something better for the situation, or uh, smack the opponent decently hard. Uh, both options are incredibly useful. Uh, also having access to Shell Smash, uh, depending on the matchup, that could come into play. Um, I haven't been the biggest fan of Shell Smash Blastoise, if I'm being perfectly honest. Um, it just has been entire, incredibly underwhelming in every essence that I've seen it used. It just hasn't ever really done anything. But hopefully I'll be able to uh, make it do some work. Uh, and if not, uh, this thing can serve as incredibly great bulky water for the team uh, throughout the course of the season, and it will more than likely uh, consistently do what needs to be done. It will consistently fulfill the role that it needs to fulfill, which is perfect. The next mon I picked up is going to be New Balance. the Rotom Mo. I call it New Balance because uh, you know, mowing the lawn is that like suburban dad standard. You gotta, gotta keep your mow lawn mowed in. Who, what does suburban dads wear more than anything? New Balances. So, uh, very, very much excited to use Rotomo. I haven't used it in a while, uh, but New Balance here. Um, Got to get them grass stains on them white New Balances. Uh, it's a good volt switcher. Um, you know, gives us a little bit more momentum on the team. Three out of our four mons have, you know, momentum grabbing moves. You know, U-turn, flip turn, and volt switch respectively, which is pretty nice. Um, just good natural bulk, uh, has defog, which is also really, really useful, so now we have a, a spinner and a defogger already, uh, which is very, very nice, and I just love Rotomo's typing, it's just really, really solid. Um, typically with Rotomo, I would like to have, like, an alternative, uh, grass mon to utilize grass moves a little bit better, since it's only grass move is Leaf Storm, but that's not that big of a deal, uh, I can make use of it perfectly fine the way it is. I'm not really too worried about it. Uh, I think it'll be fine. The next 
Mon we have coming is going to complete our Fire Water Grass Core. And there's going to be Pennywise the Blissetla. I'm a huge fan of the It movies, so I, I just felt like this was uh, a good one to go with. So, um, yeah, Blacephalon, uh, you know, Ultra Beasts are broken. They always have been. They've always been ridiculous, and uh, this is no exception. Um, it's special attack stat is ludicrous. Um, it's it hits so ridiculously hard in some cases. Uh, ghost types also became so much better this generation just due to the fact that Pursuit was removed from the game. So I can just spam. I can bring this thing in and slap a hard hit off on something. And then be able to get out for free. I don't have to worry without having to worry about getting, um, you know, popped on the way out. So, that's pretty exciting. So, uh, also, uh, with, you know, 127 attack, uh, can be utilized. I uh, don't know how I'm going to utilize it, but I will, at some point in the season, be utilizing that attack stat in some way, shape, or form. Might do a final week meme off kind of situation and, and utilize it in that sense, so we'll see. Uh, but Pennywise is gonna be a lot of fun to use. I've, I haven't have used Bliss Alpha 1 in a very long time, so this is going to be a fun, fun, fun situation. Uh, plus, I can already see myself sweeping half the people with uh, Blissephalon in this league because, you know, it could be fun. Next up, we grab our Steel type, uh, one that I haven't really utilized too much uh, this generation so far, so uh, we're picking up. Um, Jinder Mahal, the Kaparaja, the modern day Maharaja, Jinder Mahal, uh, from WWE, uh, for those of you who don't know. Um, yeah, Kaparaja. Decent abilities in Sheer Force and Heavy Metal, uh, both really useful since this thing has pretty much all of the weight based uh, attacking moves, uh, and it also has a lot of really strong, hard hitting attacks to be buffed by that Sheer Force. Um, this also gives me a stealth rocker, which up to this point I did not have. So now I have rocks on the team, which is very, very nice to have always. Um, its natural bulk isn't great in its defenses, but it makes up for it in its HP stat. So I can definitely utilize it as a, as a bit of a bulkier mon, but that base 130 attack stat is going to be the bread and butter. It is just being able to get this thing in and just click a button and probably just kill something. Like, that's never a downside. So, Kaparaja is going to be an absolute monster for this team. I'm super duper pumped to use it. Um, haven't really gotten a chance to utilize it too much this generation, so uh, it's going to be a lot of fun to finally finally break the break the ice and get this thing moving. So, super hype for, Jin for, super hype for Jinder Mahal here. And then uh, coming back around, we're going to finally finish off our Fairy Dragon Steel Core, and we are going to snag our boy uh, Weasley, the Jardigon, who will be shiny because he's a ginger. He's part of the Weasley family. Uh, big Welsh dragon as well, which is kind of cool. Uh, I always loved Jardigon. Uh, it can fulfill whatever role you really need to. If you really need like a defensive dragon type, you can do that, especially with rough skin. Uh, if you need a hard-hitting offensive monster, it has sheer force as well, which is really cool. Mold Breaker is also incredibly useful in a lot of situations. Being able to like earthquake a Rotom or something like that, or something with Levitate. Um, 
you know, being able to smack things through their potential immunity abilities, uh, being able to set up stealth rocks in the face of something with like magic bounce or something like an espion, uh, stuff like that. Um, all really, really useful stuff. Um, has an incredibly strong move pool uh, to utilize. Um, Jordan is just a really, really fun Pokemon. And it's another stealth rocker, like I said. So two stealth rockers already, which is really, really nice. Uh, I like to have at least two or three on the team, two or three hazard setters on the team, usually. So uh, having both of those right back to back is really, really nice. And now uh, to round out hazard removal, uh, I grabbed an alternate uh, spinner in the form of um, FU Titanic, the Avalug. Uh, I'll probably change the name. I'll be completely honest. I, I will probably change the name. I'm getting really tired of this name. It doesn't work uh, well for me, but that's just the one I've been using for a while now, uh, so I've been sticking with it. Uh, Ability-wise, uh, Sturdy is probably going to be the one I use 9,000 times out of 10, um, just because it's the best one, being able to just guaranteed be able to get a spin-off, guaranteed be able to fire off a hard-hitting body press or something like that. Um, being able to just have those guaranteed, that one guaranteed turn, no matter what, uh, is going to be really, really useful. Um, rapid Spin, obviously, uh, the speed boost isn't going to benefit Avalug all that much, but, you know, it has the potential to do good things for it, and its stats are just great. Like, the 117 attack stat allows it to hit decently hard, um, and that 95 HP plus 184 defense is just ludicrous. This thing, unless you're set up, you're not killing this thing with a physical hit from full. It's just not happening. You're never okoing an Avalon with a physical hit. That's not, that's not happening. You just can't do it. You could try, but you're not going to succeed. So, um, can utilize this to fire off body presses now that it has access to it, which is really, really awesome. Uh, and just, I think this mod is going to be a lot of fun to utilize. Um, <clears throat> I've always enjoyed using Avalog, and it's just gotten better as the generations go on. So this is uh, this is going to be fun, and he will help the team greatly. The next mod we have is going to be. Actually, I haven't thought of a nickname for you yet. Huh. I'm just naming after one of my cats. I'm going to do naming it Loki. Because you have access to Prankster. Um, Loki, the Lipard. Um, Prankster is, is a lot of fun to utilize. Uh, it's a dark type, which I think is incredibly important. Um, because Psychic Spam is annoying, as well as uh, Ghost Spam. So having something that can take those hits, even though it's not very bulky, uh, being able to come in and outspeed those mods as well, in a lot of cases, uh, and mess them up, is really, really great. Stab Knockoff user, uh, always nice to have. Uh, and its Prankster shenanigans are, you know, its Prankster shenanigans are why you really pick something like this up. You know, Prankster T-Waves, Prankster Taunts, sub sub shenanigans like stuff like that is why you pick up a mon like Lipart. so uh, offensively it's not the strongest um, you know, its stats do the jobs it needs to be doing but uh, overall I think it will um, I think it's a I think it'll be a very beneficial mon to the team uh, it's not really much of like a glue mon, it's just kind of like a extra niche mon to fit into the the fold of, of, of the team and uh, hopefully uh, provide some benefits later on. Uh, and then our last mon is um, I'm not really sure how to say this, it's just, it's, it's a mon. We got Marowak. We have Dead Mom the Marowak. Because it's it's typically a dead mom. Um, ability wise, um, 
Rockhead and Battle Armor are probably the two I'm going to utilize the most. Avoiding crits is always nice, and the lack of uh, recoil is always a good thing. Lightning Rod doesn't really benefit us in any way, shape, or form since we're already immune to electric type attacks. Um, stats wise, uh, I always forget that this thing has incredibly good physical bulk. And it actually has good natural bulk in general. The 80 spit F and 60 HP. All really good stuff. Uh, we'll probably be running Thick Club every single week. Uh, but <coughs> for the most part, this thing is just here to um, be an electric community for the team, which I think is incredibly important to always have. Um, and it's just here to hit really hard. Um, that's just what this thing does. Marowak hits like a truck. And uh, it has actually some really, really decent coverage across the board. So I think that I can utilize that uh, incredibly well in this situation. And uh, hopefully it'll work. Hopefully it'll work out the way that I think it will. But I definitely think that... Uh, I certainly think that uh, Marowak will be uh, yeah I hope the Marowak will do some good work for the team I'm just excited to use Marowak I've never actually used it before in a draft league so it's going to be fun but uh, with that being said uh, that is going to conclude our draft analysis um, if you guys enjoyed make sure you leave a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already I know it was a little bit quicker of a draft analysis than I typically do but um, also try to be a little quieter because uh, my girlfriend's still sleeping um, she was up later than I was last night uh, me just staying up past midnight was a lot <laughs> so um, I'm sure she was up way after me uh, so yeah we're both tired and she needs her sleep so I'm just gonna let her sleep it off uh, as best as I can but uh yeah thank you guys for watching if you guys enjoy make sure you leave a like down below and subscribe if you haven't already and uh week one will start next week uh we are taking on uh, Emperor P and the LA Nita Kings uh, so uh, you will see our team builder for that going up next week and uh, the matchup will be going up the day after so until then I'm Pokey Primer signing off peace <laughs>